Welcome back to the Sometimes Builds. Do you have a sixth generation Outback and you want to put a rooftop tent on it? Then this is the video for you. We're going to figure it out. We're going to put my eye camper on the roof of this Outback. Join me. Good morning, happy Saturday. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are gonna be looking at the sixth generation Subaru Outback. And for a while, I've been wanting to put a rooftop tent on this Outback, but forever, I would see in the manual that it says rooftop tents are not supported. Do not put a rooftop tent on this. And it's been a constant debate online, back and forth of, the, is it the roof structure that can't support it? Is it the uh, these roof rails that can't support it? And it comes down to the roof rails. If you have a 2020 premium, 2020 limited, and I believe the Onyx as well with these, with these movable and um, storable, stowable rails, that is why you cannot have a rooftop tent. They only support, I think it's about 130 pounds of static or dynamic weight. And that's one term to, to know when going into putting anything on top of a roof. There's static versus dynamic weight. Static weight is the amount of weight that the car's roof and the rails and the, the whole rack system can support when sitting still. That usually is higher than the dynamic weight. The dynamic weight is how much weight is allowed to go on that roof before the car starts getting top heavy and turning start, starts to be an issue. It might be unsafe to turn because it could roll over. So you can't put like a thousand pounds on this roof and then expect to turn at 60 miles an hour and not flop a car over. So that's dynamic versus static weight. Well, the dynamic and static weight of the stock rail system this movable rail system here, I believe the dynamic weight is only 130, maybe 160 pounds. I'll put it right up here in the corner just to be sure. But either way, it is not enough to support a rooftop tent. Um, the static weight is a little bit more, but it's not enough to support a rooftop tent and potentially two adults in there. So you're adding potentially two, four, 400 pounds for two 200 pound people. I'm just generalizing weights here, but that's, that's a lot of weight for potentially these rails that are just made out of some kind of really, really light metal. So with that, first thing we need to get, this is the uh, Yakima Landing Pad 27. This is the first thing that you have to order. These will connect into the existing rails. So I'm gonna be removing the crossbars, those ones that move and, and, and connect and swivel around, remove the crossbars, and then these landing pads will go in their place. Once we had the landing pads in place, then we use these Yakima Skyline Towers. So the Skyline Towers will connect to the landing pads, which are connected to the, the roof of the uh, vehicle. And then this will allow us to use the uh, Yakima Jetstream crossbars. And the Jetstream crossbars will link into this. So it's really three things you need to, one, adapt to the vehicle, two, adapt from the adapter to the rail kit, and then the rails. Um, there's also a, they recommend an SKS locks core. I think each one of these, each one of these skyline towers has like a, has like a lock right here and you can swap it out. So they're all the same lock. So no one can take the, the rails out and take any of your stuff. We're going to do all that today. So let's get started with the Yakima pad 27. You get two different styles of landing pad in here. One style looks like this and I'll put it up nice and close to see it. This is one style, notice there's, it's flat under there. And then this is the other style you get. Notice that there is a, like a protrusion here and it has a built-in screw. And then with the, the box for the Yakima landing pads, you get two different size bolts and then two tools to drive those two bolts in. Why are they different? Well, looking at the uh, rails on top, one of the arms has a swivel on it and then one of them has like a, it lands in and then, and, and then it clicks in the existing, um, rails on the Subaru. So they have to adapt to what's there because we're going to be using the existing side rails. We're just going to be re re replacing the crossbars. So we're going to take our Torx T25 and that will fit in the star bit, the Torx bit right here. And we can remove, then that bolt comes out and then this whole rail comes off. We're not going to be reusing this. Do the same on the other side. Do notice, however, this is the, si the, the size of bolt on the driver's side. Notice it's very skinny. 
And then on the passenger side, notice the size of the bolt. It has a, it's very girthy. It's a very different style bolt. So front driver's side gets the skinny bolt, rear passenger side gets the thicker bolt. Just keep that in mind because those two bolts that replaced it correspond to these two. All right, I'm gonna use the direction so you don't have to. Hopefully that doesn't, I don't regret putting it on that water. Important note for the Outback, the inside the Yakima cover here, there's a picture and it shows what corner of the vehicle it corresponds to because it needs to match the molding perfectly. There's two different styles of these mounts. They call this one the bare mount, B-A-R-E. This is the one that has no, no protrusion on the bottom. And then they call this the catch mount. So the catch mount is gonna go on the passenger front, or sorry, on this side, driver rear, the bare mount on the uh, passenger front or driver front. So on this side, we're gonna be using the M6 bolt. This is a smaller bolt, like I mentioned, and the smaller washer, corresponding washer. And then you're gonna position the, it's, it's like a diagonal down. You're gonna position it this way. It, it only fits one way. It, it contours with the uh, existing rail right here. So then you can line your, your bolts up right there, M6 bolt, and then take this supplied tool and then tighten that up. And it wants this to be tightened to 2.3 Newton meters as per the directions here. Loosen the uh, bolt up a little bit so the catch has a little bit of room. And then that will pop into place. And once it pops in into place here, we tighten it to 2.3 Newton meters. But it's gonna take a second for it to catch. Like that. So, half done, now we can do the other side. Here on the passenger side of the Outback, I've already removed the rail here. There was, a, there was a hex bolt right here. You take the hex bolt out and then you just pull the rail right out. Now we can install the Skyline um, landing pads. So similar to the driver's side, we can look, on, we can look here on the face of the um, landing pad itself and see that there's a picture and it has a little arrow. This is for the fronts, for the passenger front and it'll align right into that hole. I think I have to loosen this a little bit more. So for the rear, same thing, we put the bare mount on. We take the M8 washer and the M8 fastener, and we can start hand threading that down because you don't want to cross thread this. Start hand threading that. For this side, I had to push down, so if, the, if, the, if, the, if this gets caught, you just push down on this bolt and it'll, it'll drop. If this is the little catch that will hold the bracket on. And then from there, you can take the same wrench and tighten it down to 2.3 Newton meters. The manual actually recommends keeping the covers on if you do not plan on putting the, um, the Skyline towers or the rails on. This will, pr will protect the bolt, the washer, and all that from getting dirt, debris, and water in there. So keep these on if you're not gonna put anything else on. This is gonna be the Skyline tower setup. So each one of these Skyline, the Skyline Towers comes in a pack of four. There's also really good directions. I'll put a link to the video for the Yakima instructions. Really good directions, but I'm just gonna cover what I did. I did the same thing. Comes with a tool. So first you wanna take one of your Yakima Towers. You take one of the towers and you take one of the adapter sets. You gotta make sure the adapter set matches the bars you ordered. If you order everything that I put in the link, everything will be the same. So you take the Yakima Skyline Tower and you pinch the sides of it right here. This opens up this door. So you see the door opens there. There's gonna be a screw in there. So on that screw, we're going to use the tool and start loosening it. Now you wanna, you're gonna wanna hold your tower like this, vertically. Cause then you can see right here, this screw is opening a security door. You'll see a little piece of metal slide out of the way and then now not sure if you can see it but as you loosen this the bolt becomes visible so once that bolt is visible you take the adapter and you'll see that one side has like a bunch of ridges on it a little a bunch of vertical ridges um, and then the uh, adapter part pokes through that's facing down so you face it down push it in and you'll hear it click and it clicks now after that clicks in you need to, I did, I pretty much went onto this underside here and I put my tool inside of the screw so it holds it in place. And then with that, you can take the little piece of metal, that metal um, 
adapter and slide it in the hole. Basically, you want to get it to line up so it so it threads into that screw that you exposed. Then once it threads in, you can just start tightening it. And the directions say keep on tightening it until you hear it click. It's going to feel like a gas cap. It'll just go click, 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 and you do that three times. So mine is tight now, and if I click it, so now I know it's tight. So you'll see here, this curved edge right here is what goes towards the front of the vehicle. You want the wind to go over it and then come off of it. Okay, so here's the jet stream bar. You want this curved edge here, see right there, you want that curved edge to be towards the front of the vehicle. So wind comes over it and then comes through it. The jet stream bars come with this um, insert here to keep out grit and everything. So I'm just peeling it out of the way, just enough until I get it on the car, measure it out, and then I can cut this and push it into fit. This is one of my towers and I'm taking this metal piece right here and I'm gonna slide it into this groove. So you just wanna get it to line up with that groove. There, and it's gonna get caught on the rubber so you just gotta lift it off. But now that it's, it's on there, you see that, there we go. We don't wanna torque anything down yet. That's this screw right here. Don't want to torque that down yet until we get it on the car and measured because we don't know exactly where it needs to fall. And if you're wondering what makes it, what, what makes this tower stay on the landing pad, it's this door right here. If you see this door, if I shut it, see these things that protrude? This is what will lock the um, tower to the landing pad. So now that we have this assembled on here. We can take it to the top of the Outback and put it on the Outback. So I can line this up here and push my bar to fit a little bit better. So I'm just gonna put this side in and I'm gonna close the door to lock it. So, cause I'm only, I'm here by myself. So that will at least stay holding on on that side. Now I can go to the other side, take this cover off, don't need this cover anymore and do the same thing. This rubber thing will fix it. We'll fix it afterwards. Same thing here. Line this up. Shut that. And now it's secure. Now what you need to do is we need to measure the, um, the bar going across. Cause you don't want it. We don't want like what, six inches over here and nothing over there. So once you have it centered, then you can come here and lock this down. Same as the other bolt. You turn it until you hear it click. So same thing on this side, once it's at the chosen position, you can lock it down until you hear it click. And it should close easily. If it doesn't close easily, you need to check something because it's not lined up right. The end caps will click in place. There's a flat piece on the bottom of the end caps that goes on the bottom. And of course you wanna make sure it lines up correctly. The flat piece will go under the channel. It does not go in the channel. So you put it under the channel, line it up, and it'll click in place. Next, we're going to install the SKS cores. So I'll show you up close on this one. You'll see the, the plug core right here. So you take a screwdriver, you take one of the keys, and you put it, you insert it in there to pop out the old plastic core. This is just a piece of plastic. Now, in the, in the SKS key set, you get an actual key, and then you get a control key. The control key is what puts it into um, a mode that, that it can be inserted or removed into the chamber. And you'll see that it has two little teeth that pop out. The two little teeth are facing down and then you push it in until you hear it click. If you try and pull it out, it'll come right back out. So you push it in until you hear it click and then you put your finger on the lock cylinder and then you pull out the control key. From there, you can put in the actual key, turn it and lock it. Now I can't open the Yakima rail. I can't take the rail off. So the only way to take the rail off is to put it in the unlocked mode again. And now I can pinch it and then rail will pop off like that. Like that. And lock it like that. It comes with two keys and then you gotta keep the control key if you ever wanna remove the lock cylinder. So we finished the installation of the Yakima rail system on this 2020 Subaru Outback. It started with the Yakima Landing Pad 27. That's the model that fits the Subaru Outback. From there, it's the Skyline Towers. And then from there, it's the Jetstream Bars. Those three things 
is what's going to let us put the eye camper on. So next, I need to wait until tomorrow when Uncle Charlie can get here. We'll pick up the eye camper and we'll put it on the roof. So let's jump to tomorrow. Give it all the way. Don't put all the weight on the trash can. It won't last. And there you have it, the 2020 Outback 6th generation with a eye camper on the roof and the roof has not come crashing down, the rails are solid, I'm not scared standing underneath of it, it is possible, um, I am going to do some test driving with it after I let this air out, this has been closed for at least a year, and ironically enough it is the exact same, it's, it's the exact same inside as I left it, so definitely props to eye camper for keeping this thing completely sealed when it's closed. So if you have any questions, definitely put them in the comments below. Um, I'm going to put all three of the parts you need listed in the, des in the description. There are instructions on the uh, Yakima website, uh, and they also have a YouTube channel with the videos on there on how to do this by their standards, by their instructions. So I would definitely follow that. This is more of a vlog style to see how I did it, see if I did anything differently. You have, you have different sources to compare. So. It is possible. You can put an eye camper on a uh, 2020 outback, despite the manual saying you can't. But that's just me. Do this at your own discretion. Um, if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. This is sometimes built, so if you like this kind of content, sometimes it's Subaru, sometimes it's working on a truck, four-wheeling, we're going on adventures sometimes. Definitely subscribe below because that is what helps the channel the most. We are working our way towards 1,000 subscribers. So close, we are at 650 as of the recording of this video so we are we are definitely moving along there and lots of camping coming up with an eye camper on an outback not a wilderness just an outback limited so see you next time peace